Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of Allah, most merciful, most compassionate. All praise be to Allah. Peace and blessings be upon the Prophet Muhammad and all the prophets from Adam to him. Peace be upon them. In this session, we shall share with you Mevlana Rumi's moral exhortation lessons on the significance of self-discipline, self-struggle to become a good human being or what Mevlana calls in Persian Mard Khuda, a godly man, a man of God or a woman of God or in Arabic Al Insan Al Kamil, a perfect human being. Throughout the Masnavi, Mevlana here and there deals with this subject because of the significance. Also, he has separate chapters. In the first volume of the Masnavi, for, for instance, Mevlana Muhammad assigns a separate chapter to the subject matter of greater jihad, meaning self-struggle, self-striving, by entitling it with the quotation from the prophetic hadith. It says, on the comment, commentary on the hadith, Rajana min al-jihad al-asghar il al-jihad al-akbar, we have returned from the lesser jihad to the greater jihad. Oh, as we all remember, this hadith was stated by the Prophet when the Muslims had been returning from the Battle of Badr, in which they had defeated their Meccan opponents. And the Prophet said, now we are returning from the greater jihad, from the smaller jihad to the greater jihad. The companions ask, O oh, Messenger of God, is there a bigger jihad than the one that we had just had? He said, yes, nafs, the internal enemy that we have all within ourselves, our ego, our selfishness. So let us see how Mevlana understands and present to us moral and spiritual implications of this hadith. It is worth mentioning there is also another hadith in support of this. أَفْضَلُ الْجِهَادِ أَنْ يُجَاهَدَ الرَّجُلُ نَفْسَهُ وَهَوَاهُ Best of jihad one can have one can do is the struggle and self-striving against the temptations of one's carnal soul, meaning nafsul amara. Our nafs, our carnal soul, has limitless desires, passions, vices, blemishes. Of course, to teach the threats and tricks of the nafs, carnal soul, Mevlana makes use of several symbolic terms to show how the magnitude of this effort, magnitude of the struggle, and the difficulty of the struggle. He says, nafs sometimes may appear to you like a dragon, like a pharaoh, like hell. So each symbol, in fact, has many implications in the teachings of Mevlana's moral philosophy. And let me carry on with his interpretation. He says, look, we have slain the outward enemy. There remains within us a worse enemy than the outward one. It is easy to fight against the visible enemy, but difficult to combat against the invisible enemy. You may use your reason, you may use your intelligence, and carnal soul's desires, ambitions cannot be easily defeated, cannot be controlled, unless you seek divine guidance. And help. So Mevlana continues, this carnal soul or self or nafs is hell, and hell is a dragon which is not diminished by oceans. The selfish desires, temptations of the carnal soul are so intense, sometimes so detrimental, they may burn the heart like the fire of hell. He is, hell is always ever, ever hungry to eat more. 
and you allude in the Quran and in fact uh, asking more and more waters of oceans may not even put out its flames and asking are you filled are you filled it says not yet here is the fire here is the glow here is the burning so he keep on saying to swallow a whole world our nafs is there any more that i can eat is there any more that i can get is there any more position that i can acquire so somehow unsatisfied and mevlana warns us of it is dangers of falling into traps of our nafs therefore this hadith that we quoted in the beginning when we returned back from the so called war or warfare which which was regarded by the prophet as lesser jihad now it is inner warfare is the real jihad real struggle so i pray god mevlana says to grant me strength and aid so that i can shake the mountain like of my nafs the mountain of god he says of course this is symbolized the whole world in which we live and by the pleasures of which we are sometimes captivated and become slave mevlana gives as an example how to defeat our carnal souls ambitions how to control he says the best example of course we can find from the lives of the companions of the prophet but here he suggests ali bin abi talib the beloved son in law of the prophet and the fourth caliph of islam may allah please with him he mevlana gives a separate chapter to illustrate ali and his opponent if you recall ali was about to defeat his opponent during a war and he took out his sword about to kill his opponent and the opponent spat on his face and ali immediately dropped his sword and gave up on fighting and relaxed his opponent so this was in fact in a, in a nutshell a short story that mevlana dwells and each uh, couplet he we can maybe elaborate more and more but to make the story short who was ali ali bin abi talib served for islamic civilization for various beautiful exemplary characteristics but two of which are very striking very exemplary as we learn from the prophet muhammad peace be upon him he says ana madinatul ilm wa ali babuha i am the city of knowledge and ali is the gate to that knowledge to the city and this shows ali is vast of knowledge ocean of knowledge and and of course spiritual and moral and so he was like a gate if you want to go to the gate of knowledge you have to go through for ali ali bin abi talib's wisdom and the second characteristics of course ali was characterized as lion of god asadullah because of his strength and power and he was able to defeat his opponents so courageous he was therefore he earned this honorific title both like babul ilm and also asadullah in two ways so during this of course a skirmish or or uh, uh, fighting when once his opponent spat on the face of ali ali took it that this opponent was insulting him by spitting on him so this this said this was to my nafs and he spat on his face and ali was fighting for whom for for not his self glory or arrogance or boastfulness not to show off that he is so strong so powerful he needed his power whenever he, whenever there was a need to, to defend himself so ali threw away his sword and the opponent was surprised and begged him what was the reason for you to spare my life and by throwing away so your sword you are asadullah you are so strong and please tell me what was the thing that you so 
when you lift up your sword, that stopped you from doing it. And of course, Ali said, look, I move everything with Allah for the sake of Allah. If I do something, I do it for the pleasure of Allah. After all, I am the servant of God. I am not under the command of my body. That's exactly Mevlana's expressions. Because since you spread on my, on my face, this was to my nafs, my ego. And I am the line of God, yes, but I am not the line of passion. My deed bears witness to my religion. Since I do everything I love for the, God, for the sake of Allah, I dislike for the sake of Allah, I give for the sake of Allah, I withhold for the sake of Allah. In fact, this is what Mevlana was saying in all couplets and referring to this beautiful hadith. Man ahabba lillah wa abghada lillah wa manaa lillah faqad istakbal al-iman. Whoever loves for, for the sake of Allah, dislikes for the sake of Allah, prevents for the sake of Allah, has indeed attained the perfection of his faith. So this was Ali's example for all of us. So in this beautiful month of Ramadan, we are doing self reckoning, self struggling, trying to be a good human being. And the, mo the most uh, invisible, but most also elusive, deceitful enemy is within us, our ego. And time for us to take care of our inner world, purify our soul from all sorts of ambitions, blemishes, evil thoughts, and desires to become a good human being, to become a good servant of God Almighty. And this month of Ramadan is a means, is a way for us to work on our spiritual world, spiritual strength, and enlighten our spiritual world and our inner world by the recitation of the Quran, by the wisdom of the Quran, by repentance, by asking for the forgiveness of Allah. May Allah's love, mercy be upon you all. May Allah give us his forgiveness, his wisdom, his knowledge. May Allah help us to become a good, charitable, caring, sharing human being. Assalamu alaikum.